Hey guys, it's me Sarah here from Wholesale Ted and in today's video I'm going to be doing something that has been highly requested. I'm going to be giving an updated step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create an AliExpress dropshipping store with WooCommerce and AliDropship. So yes, if you are one of those people that prefers to use WordPress and WooCommerce to build your dropshipping empire, then this tutorial is for you. This is an updated version of my 2017 WooCommerce tutorial. In that one, I used Woo Dropship, but these days, Ali Dropship is easily the best plugin on the market for AliExpress dropshipping. This is going to be a 17 step tutorial and for each step I'm going to switch over to my computer so that you can see exactly how to complete each step and follow along with my screen. Here are the 17 steps that we will be following. If you want to skip ahead to a particular step then I will have timestamps so that you can jump straight to it in the video description below. Alright the fun begins, I'm going to switch over to my computer now and give you a quick preview of the store that we are about to build. So here is the store that we are going to build. It features a custom logo and a nice big splash image to give the store character and style. Scrolling down, you can see that we've created a simple yet professional design by previewing different products listed in our store. So coming back up, let's take a look at the menu. We've got a working store menu, including a sub-menu under the products tab, showing off the different categories of items that we sell. So here are the coffee mugs we've listed in our store. Let's open one up so that you can see a product page. Here is a product page. On the right, we've got bullet points promoting and selling our item, which have been proven by Amazon to be effective for conversions. We've also got a working image gallery on the left, and customers can check out the different photos. And this product has multiple variations. Customers can purchase either a black mug, a blue mug, a green mug, or a red mug. Scrolling down the page, you can see we've got a bigger product description, great for SEO and related products at the bottom. Scrolling back up, let's finish this preview off by taking a look at how customers can purchase items. I've added one of these self-stir mugs to my cart. And here is our nice, simple, yet professional checkout page. As you can see, we've set it up so that customers can pay for their items with PayPal, and we've set it so that each item has free shipping. Alright, so that is the store that we are going to build. Let's get started. Step 1. Set up our hosting and domain name with SiteGround. To set up our hosting and our domain, we are going to be using a low cost yet high quality service called SiteGround. And this has gotten a 4 out of 5 star rating from TechRadar. Now in my 2016 and 2017 tutorials, I recommended that you used iPage because it was the cheapest form of hosting, but now it no longer is. And the reason for that is because as of February this year, Google now requires that websites like e-commerce stores that collect data from customers have what is called an SSL certificate. If you don't have one, they will flag your site as being unsafe, massively hurting your sales and conversions. And an SSL certificate is unfortunately not included with an iPage subscription, however it is included for free with a SiteGround subscription. A one year subscription to SiteGround will cost you $4.95 a month paid up front, however sometimes you can catch it for $3.95 a month and if you find it for that price I recommend that you snap it up fast. Another option is to instead choose to purchase a one month trial with SiteGround, however this is not something I recommend that you do unless you are really strapped for cash. The reason for that is they will charge you $4.95 for that one month plus a huge $14.95 fee, so just one month is going to cost you $20. And after that, if you want to keep your site active, then you're going to need to purchase at least a one year subscription plan. So it's much better to just go ahead and do it upfront. If you would like to follow along with this tutorial, you will find a link to how you can get a SiteGround subscription in the video description below. Please be aware that is an affiliate link. Here at Wholesale Ted, all of our YouTube tutorial videos are free and affiliate links help us keep our videos free. Come and click on the web hosting button in the top menu. Click the button under Shared Hosting. Come to the Startup Plan and select Get Started. Now let's register a domain name. Type in the domain name that you want. Make sure that you have .com selected. I don't recommend using any other type of URL. Then click the Proceed button and just let the page load. Alright, now you need to create an account. 
For this, you're going to need to choose an email address to use as your username and a password. Make sure you choose an email address that you have easy access to and that you don't mind receiving emails in. I'm going to be blurring out all of my personal details in this section to keep them private. And of course, select a strong password as you will be using this site to make sales and collect customers' private data. So having a strong password is crucial. All right, once you've created your account, you are going to need to fill out your personal details. You will need to give your full name, your address, and your phone number. Other information is optional. After that, fill out your credit card details. This will be the credit card that you will be using to purchase your hosting and domain name from SiteGround. Again, I've blurred out my details for this video for obvious reasons. If your billing address is different from the address you gave above, you can deselect this checkbox and fill in the correct details. Under hosting services, select the period that you want. For most, it'll be either the trial or the one year plan, as this is just a tutorial and I don't plan on keeping this store, I'm selecting the trial plan. And after that, just scroll down to the end of the page, click the confirm checkbox and select the pay now button. Then just let SiteGround load and create your account. And done. Now just click the proceed to customer area button. Now, if you are really strapped for cash, then you can choose to purchase your domain name through another site like GoDaddy or Namecheap to save a few dollars. But if you do do that, then you are going to have to go through the technical process of updating the name servers and then pointing that domain name at your store, which is why I recommend that most beginners just purchase their domain name through SiteGround. They will connect your domain name for you, which means that you will have less technical hurdles to have to overcome, meaning that you get set up faster and that you can start making money faster. Step two, install WordPress. WooCommerce is a plugin for the content management system called WordPress. Before we can install WooCommerce, we need to install WordPress. Luckily, WordPress is free and SiteGround makes it super easy for us to install it in just a few clicks. Let me switch over to my computer and show you just how easy it is to do this. Come to the members area inside SiteGround. Make sure you are in My Accounts. Then come and click the Launch Setup Wizard button. From the menu, click the Start a New Website checkbox. Once you've done that, choose to install WordPress, not WooCommerce. You will then need to create your WordPress login details. Choose an email address that you have easy login access to. You will also need to select a username and a password. Don't create a weak password, it is very important to keep your account secure. And once you've done that, click the confirm button. On the next page, they're just trying to sell you unnecessary extras you don't need, click the confirm button again. On the next page, tick this checkbox and then click the complete setup button and then wait for the page to load. This may take a few minutes. This is absolutely normal. Don't exit. Awesome, now just select the Proceed to Customers Area button to return to your SiteGround admin area and you are done. Step three, install WooCommerce. Now that we've installed WordPress, we can now install WooCommerce and it is really easy to do. Let me switch back to my computer and show you how to complete this step. Once again, start out in your SiteGround account. Make sure that you are in the My Account section of it. Then come and click the Go to Admin panel button. Now you're at the login page for your new WordPress site. Log in using the login details that we created in step two. And now you're in your new WordPress site. On the sidebar menu, click plugins. Now click the add new button. All right, now we just need to come to the plugin search bar and type in WooCommerce. Once you've typed it in, the WooCommerce plugin should show up. And then you just need to click the install now button. It may take a few minutes to install. Don't click away, just be patient. Awesome, once it's installed, just click this button. Now we need to complete our WooCommerce setup. You'll need to select what country you live in and fill out your address. I recommend keeping the currency to USD and selecting that you plan to just sell physical products. Once you've done that, click the Let's Go button. Now again, we just need to let it load. This can take a few minutes, that is absolutely normal. 
don't click away, just be patient. And that's it, we've successfully installed WooCommerce. Let's move on to the next step. Step four, install and activate the Ali Dropship plugin. Ali Dropship is the best AliExpress dropshipping plugin for WordPress. It is very similar to Obelo. Not only does it greatly speed up the process of adding items to our store, but it is going to semi-automate the fulfillment process, making it much easier to process our customers' orders. Ali Dropship costs $89 to purchase. Keep in mind though that this is a one-off purchase. Unlike Obelo, which charges you fees once you sell 50 or more items a month, once you purchase Ali Dropship, that is it. I will have a link to where you can get Ali Dropship in the video description below. Please be aware that is an affiliate link. If you would choose to use it, we would greatly appreciate it. All right, so to begin with, we need to start out by purchasing it and installing it. Let me switch over to my computer and show you how to do this. Come to the Ali Dropship site. Again, I'll have a link to it in the video description below. Click the Buy Plugin button. On the next page, click the Buy Now button. On the checkout page, enter your email address. You don't need to add any comments. Then just scroll down and enter your credit card details. If you'd prefer, you can choose to buy the plugin with PayPal instead of a credit card. After that, click the Complete Order button. Now just let the page load. It may take a few minutes. That's normal. Don't click away. Just be patient. On this page, just click the Continue button. This is an upsell page and we don't need what they're selling us. Awesome, we've purchased Ali Dropship. Scroll down and find the Ali Dropship WooCommerce plugin and click the download button. When you click it, the plugin should download to your computer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is switch back to our WordPress dashboard while keeping this page open. We'll need our license key later. On the left menu, click the plugins button. On the plugins page, click the add new button. After that, just click the Upload Plugin button. On the next page, you'll need to select Choose File and find the Ali Dropship plugin file you just downloaded and select it. Then click Install Now. The installation process may take a few moments and again, this is absolutely normal, don't click away. Awesome, now just click the Activate Plugin button and you've successfully installed Ali Dropship. All right, now that we have purchased Ali Dropship and installed it, we need to add our license key to it so that we can activate it. Earlier when we purchased Ali Dropship, I said to keep that purchase page open, and the reason for that was because it had our license key on it. So go back to that page now, and I will show you how to add the license key to your plugin and activate it. Come back to the Ali Dropship purchase confirmation page. Find your license key and copy it and then switch back to your WordPress admin area. On the left sidebar menu, click the Ali Dropship Woo button. Then come and select the license button. Then all you need to do is paste in your license key and click the activate button. After that, it's time to move on to the next step. Step five, install the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. Later on in this video, in step nine, we are going to automatically add AliExpress products to our store using the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. That means if you haven't already, you are going to need to get the Chrome browser and install it. So if you haven't done that already, go do so now. To download the Ali Dropship Chrome extension, you will need to go to the Chrome web store. And I will have a link to how you can get there in the video description below. All right, let me switch back to my computer and show you how to do this. Come to the Chrome Web Store extensions. Again, I'll have a link to it in the video description below. Go to the search bar and type in Ali Dropship. When the extension appears, click the Add to Chrome button. On the pop-up, click Add Extension. When it successfully installs, you'll see the success message in the top right of your browser. Close this message. Then click the Ali Dropship Chrome button and type in the URL of your new store and click Add. And then that's it, you've successfully added the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. It's time to move on to the next step. Step six, install the Ali Dropship theme, Shopper. One of the quirks of working with the Ali Dropship plugin is that it is not compatible with many WordPress themes. You need to make sure that you are choosing a theme that is compatible with Ali Dropship. 
There are multiple themes to choose from and you only need to use one of their free ones. You don't need to pay for any of their premium themes. I think that the easiest theme for beginners to use to create a simple yet professional store is the shopper theme. So that is what we are going to be using in this tutorial. To download and install it, you will need to go to the Ali Dropship themes page. And again, I'll have a link to that in the video description below. All right, so let me switch back to my computer and show you just how simple it is to do this. Start out by coming to the Ali Dropship theme page. Again, I'll have a link to it in the video description below. So scroll down until you find the shopper theme. We'll be using this one, so click it. On the theme page, click the download button. When you do this, it will start downloading to your computer. When it's finished downloading, switch back to your WordPress dashboard. On the side menu, put your mouse over the appearance button and click the themes button from the sub menu. On the themes page, come and click the add new button. Then on the add themes page, click the upload theme button. Click the choose file button. Then find the shopper theme file that we downloaded to your computer earlier and open it. And then just click the install now button and wait for it to install. Awesome, all that is left for you to do is to click the activate button and you are done. It is time to move on to the next step. Step seven, edit the Ali dropship settings. In this step, we're gonna be doing a couple of things. Firstly, we're gonna be setting it so that Ali dropship will override the customer's phone number with our phone number on the checkout page. That means the supplier, if they need to get in contact with us, will use our phone number and not the customer's. Secondly, we're gonna be adding in an automatic note to each order that will tell the AliExpress suppliers to not include any invoices or marketing materials with our order. This is called blind dropshipping, and it means that the customer will not find out how much that we originally paid for the item. We're also gonna be setting it so that Ali Dropship will check if any of our suppliers have run out of stock. And if they have, it's gonna set our inventory to zero. So I'm gonna switch back now and show you how to edit Ali Dropship settings. Come to your WordPress dashboard and click the Ali Dropship Woo button on the left menu. When the page loads, come and click on settings in the left menu. Now we're gonna update the checkout settings. First, we're gonna set it so that when customers order an item, the AliExpress supplier will be given our phone number, not the customer's. So come to the default phone number and type in your phone number. Don't worry, the customer won't see this. Then click this button so that your phone number will override the customer's number. And after that, type in this custom note. This will mean that no promo materials or invoices will be included in the package. In this industry, we call that blind dropshipping. Then just click Save Changes. All right, now we're gonna change the order update settings. Come to the left menu and click the Updates button. Now come to this button and click it. Change it so that when a variation disappears or is out of stock, that the quantity for it will automatically set to zero. Keep the rest of the settings like they are. You can change these if you like though. It's entirely up to you. Now just come to Order Update and click the enable button. Keep it set to update once daily, and then just click save changes. Step eight, add a custom logo and update our store's color scheme. Adding a custom logo and giving it a custom color scheme is gonna help give our store a brand and a unique feel. Now you can create a logo for free using a logo maker, and I will have a link to one in the video description below. For most of you though, you're probably gonna get a much better logo made if you just head on over to Fiverr and get a graphic designer to make one for you. And it's gonna cost you just $5 plus a 50 cent transaction fee. And something that you will want to do before you go ahead to complete this step is to pick a color that matches your store's niche. For me, I'm selling coffee accessories. So I'm gonna choose the color brown since coffee beans are brown. So once you've gone ahead and chosen your color, Follow along with me on my computer. Start out on the dashboard. On the left sidebar, click the appearance button. Now click the customize button after putting your mouse over the shopper theme. Okay, start out by clicking site identity. Then click select logo. Click the select files button. Now find where you saved your logo on your computer and open it. Once loaded, click select. On the next page, you'll have an option to crop the image. 
I don't need to crop my image, so I'm just going to click Open Image. Fantastic, we've now added a custom logo to our store. Let's modify the color scheme. Come and click the back button. Now select the color button in the left menu. Come to the link color and click select color. Choose the color that you've already chosen for your store. Because I'm selling coffee accessories, I'm going to be selecting a brown. Alright, so when you've chosen your color, come and click the publish button to save it. Next, click the back button. On the left side menu, select buttons. Now come to background color and choose the same color that you chose before. Almost there. Now just click publish. And that's it. We've added a custom logo and color theme to our store. Step nine, add products to your store. For this step, we're going to be going over to AliExpress and then importing products directly in using the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. So of course that means that to complete this step you're going to need to open up your Chrome browser. So go ahead and do that now and then head on over to AliExpress. Come to AliExpress and do a search for the product that you want to add. Let the results load up. Once the results have loaded, scroll through the list and find the product that you want to add. Put your mouse over it and click the Ali Dropship button. Wait a few moments while the product is being added to your store. When you get the tick, it means it was successfully added. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll through the listings and add one randomly. All right, so let's choose this one. I'm gonna click the Ali Dropship button and give it a few moments to add it to my store. Success. Now I'm gonna switch back to my WordPress dashboard to show you it's been added. I'm gonna come and click on the products button. And look, there are the products that we selected. So go through now and add each of the products you plan to sell from AliExpress. Step 10, how to add product categories. Come to the left sidebar menu and hover your mouse over the products button and select categories from the sub menu. All right, so I'm gonna add in one item category, coffee mugs. So I'm gonna to come to name and type in coffee mugs. Next, I'm gonna add in a slug. If you don't know what this means, then don't worry about it, it is optional. Now I'm just gonna scroll down the page and click the add new category button. And then that's it. Coming here, we can see that my coffee mug category has been successfully added. I'm now gonna pause the video and add in two extra categories. Done, I've gone and added two new categories, coffee spoons and travel mugs. So go on and add your product categories now. Step 11, how to create an About Us page. On the left WordPress menu, click the Pages button. Then come and click the Add New button. Come and enter a title, a simple title like About Us works great. Now you just need to enter your content. I've already written up some filler content for this video. I'm also going to use an image as part of my About Us page. I'm going to set it so that the picture is on the left side of the page with the text I've prepared in advance written around it. Don't stress too much over your About Us page. It's important to have one as it creates trust and legitimizes your store, but a simple page with three to four paragraphs is plenty in the beginning. I find that a lot of beginners overthink things like the About Us page and put too much emphasis on it. You can make a better page later once you are making sales. Once you've finished adding content, click the Publish button. And then that's it, we've successfully created our About Us page. You can preview it by clicking the Preview Changes button. It's time to move on to the next step. Step 12, how to add a Contact Us page. On the left sidebar, click the Plugins button. Now click Add New. In the search bar, type Contact Form. Click Install Now next to Contact Form 7 and let it install. Once installed, click the Activate button. Come back and click the button titled Plugins. Click the Settings button under Contact Form 7. Come and copy the short code on this page. Then click Pages. Click Add New. Type in a title. Contact Us works great. Now paste in the short code that we copied earlier. Then just click Publish and you are done. You've successfully created a contact form. Messages from it will be sent to the email address you created with your WordPress account.
Step 13, how to add free shipping. For this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna set up one shipping option, and that is free shipping. It means that all of the products in your store will be eligible for free shipping. This means that you're going to need to be keeping this in mind when you're pricing your products, since you need to absorb the cost of the shipping into the price that you are charging. Luckily though, shipping costs on AliExpress are very, very cheap. Something else that is very important to note is that for this tutorial, I didn't specify any particular countries, so my shipping was applied worldwide. But I don't suggest this for most people. As I explained in my video, 10 things to do before drop shipping, I recommend that beginners stick to countries that have fast, efficient shipping options. And the absolute easiest country to begin with is drop shipping to the USA. I recommend that beginners just start out focusing on the USA market because they have a very fast, efficient shipping option called ePacket. All right, let me switch over to my computer and show you just how easy it is to do this. On the left menu, hover your mouse over WooCommerce and then click the Settings button. Then come and click on the Shipping tab. Now come and click Add Shipping Zone. Name it Free Shipping. You can also select which countries you want to ship to in the zone regions. If you don't select any countries, it will be a worldwide shipping option. Once you've done that, click Add Shipping Method. A pop-up box will appear. From the drop-down menu, select Free Shipping and then click Add Shipping Method. And then that is it. Something important is that if you selected particular countries, the shipping option will only apply to those countries and people from other countries won't be able to order from you unless you create a shipping option for them. This is a good way to limit which countries you ship to. Step 14, how to set up PayPal. To keep this tutorial simple and accessible for people worldwide, I'm going to show you how to set up your checkout with PayPal. To accept payments, you're going to need a business PayPal account. Luckily, turning your personal PayPal account into a business one is free. Another good payment option is Stripe. Now, if you are eligible to use Stripe while having your currency set to USD, I highly recommend that you add this to your store. But for this video, we're just gonna be adding in PayPal. Let me switch back to my computer and show you just how easy it is to do this. On the left menu, hover your mouse over WooCommerce and then click the Settings button. On the Settings page, click the Checkout tab at the top of the page. Now just scroll all the way down to the bottom of this page. At the bottom, click the PayPal button. Alrighty, so enabling it is simple. Just click the Enable checkbox. This will enable PayPal. Then add your PayPal email address in the PayPal email box. After that, just scroll down to the end of the page and click the Save Changes button. And once you've clicked that, you are done. Now customers will be able to pay for their items using PayPal. There are other options on the checkout settings like direct bank transfer and cash on delivery, but because we haven't checked to enable them, they won't show up for the customer. Step 15, how to customize your homepage. It's a myth that you need a super fancy store design to make sales. Having a simple clean design with a bit of a unique feel is all you need for a profitable store. So we're gonna keep this tutorial nice and easy. We're gonna first of all add a big splash image to our homepage, and then we're gonna set it so that we've got a title and a subtitle overlaid on top of it. And next we're gonna set it up so that we've got different products that we're selling in our store previewed on our homepage. It's a really nice, easy way to keep our store looking professional. Okay, come to the left menu and click on the Pages button. Then come and click on the Add New button. All right, so what we need to do is create some headline text for our page and some subtext that will go under the headline. The headline text should be typed into the title box and the subtext should be placed in the big text box. I prepared some text in advance. Just a quick note, while I'm writing worldwide free shipping, that is a more advanced tactic. I recommend beginners start out by just drop shipping to the USA. Once you've added some text, come to page attributes. From the drop down menu, select home page. Next, we need to add a splash image. This image should be at least 1080 pixels long and 500 pixels high. A good place to find a splash image for your site is Google Images. Be sure to search for images that are free to use and edit, even for commercial purposes. If you don't use images that have a license that lets you do this, then you will risk being sued. For more information, watch my video, How to Not Get Sued When Dropshipping, 
which I will include a link to in the video description below. Being sued may sound scary, but don't worry, it's very easy to avoid this happening to you as long as you follow my advice. Once the image has finished loading, click the Set Featured Image button. Awesome, we have now added our homepage splash image. Now we just need to click the Publish button. Now we've got to go and set this page as our homepage. So on the left menu, come and hover your mouse over the Settings button and then click the Reading button. Next to your homepage displays, tick the Static Page checkbox. And then from the drop down menu, select the page we just created. After that, click Save Changes. Almost done. Now just come and click on the Appearance button in the left menu. Then click on this Customize button. Now click on Homepage. Here we can choose which product categories we will preview on our store homepage. If you have all of these showing, the page will get cluttered. Remove two different product previews and remove the product categories and blog preview from the homepage. And that's it. We have successfully customized and updated our homepage design. As you can see, it's got different product previews that we chose to keep and we no longer have the categories or blog posts listed on the homepage. To finish, just click the Publish button. Fantastic, I'm now going to open up the homepage on my full screen so that you can take a better look at the design. Alright, so here is the homepage. As you can see, our splash image is at the top and it has the title text that we wrote and the subtext that we created is on here too. And of course, scrolling down, we can see the product previews we chose are here as well. We've created a nice, simple, clean homepage design. It's time to move on to the next step. Step 16, update the product pages. For this step, I'm gonna be editing two different products. I'm gonna be editing the self stir mug, which comes in multiple color variations. The second product that I'm going to be updating is this camera lens travel mug, and it comes in a single variation, and that is black. I'll also show you how to set a product on sale using the self stir mug, and I'm gonna show you how to set a product to not be on sale using the camera lens travel mug. Now, this part is easily going to be the most time consuming part of setting up your store. Creating unique product descriptions can certainly be quite time consuming, but it's well worth it. So let's go ahead and edit our product pages. All right, so come to the left menu and click on the products button. So the first product that we're going to edit is the self stir mug. It's a product with multiple variations, so I'll show you how to delete the ones you don't want and edit the ones you want to keep. First things first though, delete the product title and enter your own. Next, delete the description and enter your own. I'm gonna be pasting in a description I have prepared in advance. Now scroll down the page until you come to the short description box. In this box, write some bullet points that promote and sell the item. I'm gonna be pasting in the ones that I've prepared in advance. Okay, so next we need to edit the product data. Don't worry about changing any of this in the inventory tab. And you don't need to change anything in the shipping tab either. And you can optionally choose to link products for upsells and cross-sells. Something we do want to edit though is the attributes. For the color attribute, I'm deleting the colors I plan to remove, the sky blue mug and the yellow mug. And then after I've done this, I'm going to be going through and hiding some attributes that I think look clunky and unprofessional to include. I'm going to be hiding these because they'll show up on our product page. This data has been pulled directly from AliExpress and a lot of suppliers on there have awkward English which leads to these clunky attributes. And in addition to hiding them, you can permanently remove them or you can even edit them. But all of these are optional. You may disagree with me and want to include some attributes, but hide others, and that is absolutely okay. These attributes won't be in the main section of your product description. They'll be in their own separate tab. Once I've finished editing the self stir mug, I'll show you where they appear. And I'll be honest, setting up product listings is one of my least favorite things to do. But you need to make sure that you don't take shortcuts. It's important that you edit them to make them look professional and engaging. And it's at this point that a lot of people get bored and they give up. Don't be one of those people. Dropshipping requires more than just throwing money at ads. We need to do our best to convince the customer that not only should they buy this item, but that they should trust us as well. And having professional looking product pages helps to go a long way in getting them to trust us. 
Fantastic, we've updated our attributes. Now we're going to click on the Variations tab. This sky blue mug is a variation that I don't want, so I'm going to remove it. Cool, it's been successfully removed. I'll now show you how you can update the prices of the variations that you do want to keep. I'm going to be putting this mug on sale from $19.99 down to $14.99. Alright, so as this is quite a long process to watch, I'm now going to pause this video and remove the variations of the mug that I don't want and update the prices on the variants that I want to keep. Done. Okay, after you've edited the variants, click the Advanced tab. Untick Enable Reviews. And then that is it. We don't need to update the Supplier Info or the Review tab. Then come and click the category that the item fits into. And then just click Publish. Perfect, we've updated a product with variations. I'm going to preview this page now so you can see what it looks like. So on the left is the image gallery, and on the right are the bullet points from our short product description. Down here you can see the main description that I added. And if we click on additional information, you'll see the product attributes that we chose to have are visible. Alright, so let's switch back and update the camera lens travel mug. On the left menu, Come back to the products button and click it. Now I'm just going to find the camera lens travel mug and open it. This item will be different to edit as it has no variations. Again, the first thing we want to do is delete the title and put our own one in. Next, just like before, we want to delete the description and write our own. And then come to the product short description box and write some bullet points promoting the item. Coming back to product data, just like before, we don't need to make any changes to the inventory or shipping tabs, but you can optionally add upsells or cross-sells if you'd like to in the linked products tab. Once again though, we need to go through the attributes and hide or remove any that we don't want. While I'm doing this, I want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about my product description. I wrote that product description as an example of one that is optimized for search engine optimization traffic, that is why the description is very long. However, if you're planning on running paid ads to it, then don't feel you need a long product description, a short two to three paragraph description, along with stuff like a shipping disclaimer and trust lines like secure checkout with MasterCard and Visa should be more than enough. That product description was just filler, don't copy it. I just wrote some text to help people visualize what theirs could look like. Once you've updated the product attributes, click save attributes. Now if we come to the Variations tab, you'll see that it looks very different because there are not multiple variations of it, but we still need to come to this page to update the item price. I'm not going to put this mug on sale so that you can see what an item looks like when it's not on sale. Alright, and just like before, we're going to come to the Advanced tab and turn Reviews off. And we don't need to make changes to the Supplier Info or Review tabs. Tick the correct category for the item. I accidentally ticked coffee mug instead of travel mug. Whoops. And then click the update button. And that's it. We've updated the page. I'm going to preview the product listing now so you can see what it looks like. So we've got the image gallery and the bullet points at the top. And there is no sale price this time. And scrolling down, you can see that the description I added in is here, along with related products at the bottom. And if we click the Additional Information tab, the attributes we chose are visible. Looking at these closer now, I think that I would edit some of these since the values in them are wrong, but luckily, as I've shown in this section of the tutorial, updating them is easy. So go on, edit your product pages, and we can then move on to the next step. There are a couple of things that I want to note. Firstly, I accidentally said that my items would arrive within one to two weeks. If you are doing AliExpress dropshipping with ePacket as your shipping option, I would recommend telling the customer that it's gonna take two to four weeks to arrive. And again, I really don't recommend that beginners start out by dropshipping worldwide. If you are new to this, then I recommend just focusing on USA and only selling items that have ePacket as a shipping option. I also forgot to show you how to edit images in the image gallery. It's pretty simple though. You can delete images and reorder them in this gallery section here. All right, we are almost done. Congratulations on making it this far. Just one final step to go. Step 17, create a store menu. 
All right, now we just need to create our store menu. And on it, it's gonna have a link to our home page, our about us page, our contact us page, and a link to all of our products. And we will also be creating a sub menu that contains links to our different product categories. All right, so let's switch over to my computer and complete this final step. On the left menu, hover your mouse on appearance and then click the menus button. We're only gonna be creating one menu, the main menu. Come and type in a name for it. The name primary menu works well. After that, just click create menu. Awesome, when the page loads, click primary menu as the display location. After that, click the save menu button. All right, now come and tick the pages that I am. The first page on the list should be your home page. Don't worry, we will be changing the name of it for our menu. Once you've selected all of these, click add to menu. Perfect, let's change the funny name of our home page to say home. I'm typing in caps because as part of the theme design, all menu items get capitalized anyway. I also like changing shops to the name products since I think it's more descriptive. People know that if they click it, they'll see a list of our products. After that, it's time to add in categories. Unfortunately, we have to add these URLs in manually. So in another window, open up your product categories page. Now you've got two options. You can either right click the view button under the category you want to add and click the copy link address button to get the URL, or you can open up the page and copy the URL in the browser screen. Some people might find that easier to do. Once you've got the URL, come back to your menu page under custom links, paste in the URL. And then in link text, type in the name of your category. Then just click add to menu. Perfect, now come and click the category and drag it so that it is both under the products tab and indented like I've done here. This turns it into a sub menu item for that products button. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and add in my two other categories. Awesome, so you can see I've added in my two other categories to create the sub menu. So what I'm gonna do is show you a preview of the site so that you can see how the sub menu looks. All right, so if we come to the home button, you can see it takes us to the home page. And if we hover over the products button, you can see that our sub menu pops up. And by clicking on the different items in the sub menu, we can go to their respective categories. And if we click about us, you can see that that works. And finally, if we click contact us, it takes us to that page as well. Well, everyone, that's it. We've completed the final step. Congratulations, you've completed your very own AliExpress dropshipping store using WooCommerce and Ali Dropship. And that is it, we are done. Congratulations on creating your new store. Now there are still several things that you can add to it to make it even better. For example, I recommend that you add links to your different social media accounts in the footer. And I also recommend adding a refund policy page. And I would highly recommend going in and updating the metadata of your store, in particular the title. But for now, if you follow this tutorial, you can set up a nice, basic, semi-automated dropshipping store that works. Now if you would like to get even more free dropshipping training, then be sure to subscribe to Wholesale Ted and click that little notification bell next to it so that you can be notified anytime that we post a new video. And we've actually got another freebie for you. Here at Wholesale Ted, we have a free ebook, how to make $10,000 a month online with dropshipping. You can find a link on how to download this ebook in the video description below.